Master Carlson, I'd like to request some time off to travel. This acid rain has been getting to me lately, and I'd like to take a mental health break. Um, you're in a cult. We don't offer any vacation benefits. But Master Carlson, maybe I could scout a location for a new settlement. Somewhere nicer than this. Where our older team members can retire, maybe. Surely there should be- Hold up now. You know full well that retirement benefits and pension don't kick in until age 65. Given the economic conditions we live in, I think that arrangement is more than fair. Master Carlson, has anyone in Kenshi even made it to 65? Uh, there was that Crumblejohn fellow, but we left him in Mongrel because he seemed to like the ambiance there. Anyhow, let's table this conversation for now. This intro is already far too long, and there are meat wraps that need to be folded. Get out of here before I decide to put you on peeler duty. Yes, Master Carlson. Well, I think that could have gone better. Hey now, don't beat yourself up. You made some good points. I guess. I suppose the priority right now is ending slavery and not the mental health of our cult. What about that retirement idea you mentioned? That has real potential. If you had your choice, where would you build a retirement home? Hmm, I'm not sure. But wherever it is, it would be somewhere it's always shiny. All right, folks, without further ado, it's time to go to Shun. So let's put on our wooden sandals and get going. Shun is probably the most neglected region of the map, being in the southwest. With very few points of interest and just a couple of United Cities towns, southwest is rarely visited by travelers. This is in no small part due to the crater and Iraq deterring travelers from continuing south. Once you arrive in Shun, though, you'll be pleasantly surprised by how safe it is. No bandits, no big things, no cannibals, and no racist factions. In fact, the spawn roster for Shun is probably one of the most forgiving you'll find in Kenshi. The only hostile humanoid spawn is the Band of Bones, and hostile animals are limited to gorillas and skin spiders. Each of these three hostile spawns have a significantly slower run speed than average too, so getting away is usually possible if you're not ready to pick a fight. For neutral spawns, you have both goats and garu, both of which have large squad sizes too for the leather enthusiasts out there. Speaking of leather, between gorillas, goats, and garu, you should have an ample supply of hide if you're interested in leather armor crafting. Shun doesn't disappoint in regards to resources and fertility either. It has a respectable arid fertility which resembles what you would see in the border zone, Skinner's Rome, or Shem. For copper and iron, things aren't too shabby either. I'd say that war for Shun is above average overall. As for stone and water, Shun does pretty well. You'll just want to make sure that you're near either a river or the coast if you want to get enough water. The terrain in Shun is somewhat unpredictable, yet there are several areas where you can find flat land. What makes Shun stand out though is its coast and its river network. These provide higher water levels and can be used to your advantage when defending your base. If you do want to trade with the United Cities, they're not too far off either. If you go east, the town of Drifter's Last is in the western portion of the Hook. And technically speaking, if you wanted to hunt beak things, the crater isn't far away at all. On that note, I have a few settlement recommendations near the crater for those who want easy access to the combat experience, hide, and food that beak things can provide if you take a risk. As for the locations on the coast, they are incredibly flat and well suited for building larger bases. I ended up settling this spot here because there's a ton of flat space to work with and I could also enjoy the water provided by the coast. If we take a look at our squad's base here you'll notice that I don't have a gate or a gate on the water's edge. No gate at all actually. This is due to Shun being one of the safer regions to settle. The occasional attack from a gorilla or the band of bones is all I've had to worry about here. Rather than having a front gate, I've set up two watchtowers with turrets as a substitute, and when their sight lines are combined together, they keep watch over the entire base without much issue. On that note, I do have a couple of pro tips for those interested in base defense. If your turret operators have what they need to survive in a building, you can lock the door, and that's going to act similar to a front gate with lower HP. Then, if you have any animals you'd like to guard the door, you can have them bodyguard one of the turret operators, and they'll just chill at the door 
Mallard and keep watch. To test out if this tactic would work in a more difficult fight, I sent Carlson out to commit some war crimes so that we could trigger a base attack. In the process, he may have accidentally taken out Drifter's last noble. And unfortunately, Grimm, the leader of the Hounds, met a similar fate. After making enemies with both the Hounds and the United Cities, we then waited to see if anyone would attack our open floor plan base. Eventually, a hunter raid from the United Cities was triggered, and then soon after that, we triggered the Igor Assault. Now, Igor Assaults are very fun, absolutely. But this one did have me more worried, because I wasn't going to have a front gate set up. Instead, I was just going to let... Igor's forces into my base and let the turrets do the work for me. Now to distract Igor's soldiers from storming my watchtowers or attacking my turret operators, I put some of my soldiers on taunt in the middle of the base. That way the attack would stay centered at the base and would remain under turret fire for as long as possible. And then I put up some extra turrets on our storm houses and then locked their front doors. That way if anyone in the attack did happen to punch through, odds are they would go to one of the storm houses, break in there, and still be under fire from the watchtowers. And the results you'll see here will speak for themselves. I was shocked by how well this defense went. Special shout out to each of our trusty crabs bodyguarding the front doors to make sure that the turret operators can keep doing their thing. And I did want to mention that the turrets I used were the double barrel harpoons. So if you were to use a strategy like this, just make sure your characters have some kind of heavy armor on because they are going to be taking some of that harpoon fire when the turret operators miss. By and large, this defense just went super, super well. And I don't plan on building a gate at this base. I don't think it's needed. If if it can handle Igor, then I'm confident it can handle anything roaming around it, Shun. I have to say, though, that unless you antagonize the United Cities, don't expect for your base to get attacked down in Shun. Shun stands out as one of the most peaceful regions in the game, and you get the benefits of living in a remote location without having to deal with difficult enemies or acid rain. That in mind, settling in Shun in the mid-game or late game so that you can level up your characters is a great strategy. In the hook, there's a decent amount of recruitable characters in Drifter's Last, Clown Steady, and the Way Station here if you'd like to reinforce your squad. Then you can travel to Iraq or the Bone Fields when you're ready to increase the difficulty of your playthrough. Before I forget this too, and I don't want to spoil things, but even if you don't plan on living in Shun, you should still visit there. Won't give away too much, just know that there are some interesting places to visit there. And since Shun spawns aren't that difficult, you can visit here earlier in your playthrough than you can other areas. So I'd highly recommend making the trip. Just be sure to not travel directly through Iraq or the Crater, unless you're looking to get bodied by beak things and skin spiders. All that being said, let me know in the comment section if you visited Shun yourself. Have you thought about building a base here? And if you're looking to settle somewhere more central on the map, check out this guide on the swamp and the wetlands. These regions provide unique challenges and resources for those up to the task. That's all for now. I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.